My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. In this particular episode, we're going to be spending some time doing some orbital construction using the Kerbal Inventory System, topping off with uh, putting a new docking port onto our Karayan vessel. We also want to collect some science, because I do want to be able to collect enough science to unlock electronics and get myself a bigger antenna. But first, we have some business that we do need to take care of. At the conclusion of the last episode, we left Jebediah and Glafia, along with their two rescued Kerbals, Tamley and Chrissy, aboard the Korion 1 in low Earth orbit. And we need to get the two rescued Kerbals down to the surface to complete those two contracts. So I'm going to be sending the Curse Dock 5 on its way over there, which is already in orbit. It's in the blue orbit. That's at an altitude of 120 kilometers, while the uh, Korion's at an altitude of about 80 kilometers. Unfortunately, that rendezvous is not going to happen for almost five hours. Yeah, the, the, two, the two vessels are not positioned correctly relative to each other. So I thought in the meantime, why don't we get the science buggy out and about again? You may recall that this is the vehicle that Bob rolled off of the launch pad last episode, and that sort of ended his mission. And his purpose is simply just to scoot around the Kerbal Space Center and collect some science. So instead of Bob now, we have Carol. Carol, who is fresh back from her 17-day flyby of Mimis mission. That was only four days ago she landed again. So uh, yeah, she's up and going again. And uh, yeah, we're going to collect some science. And in particular, what we're interested in are these surface samples that we can now collect. So we're going to be getting all the uh, surface samples and whatever other science we can scrounge up from the biomes that Bob couldn't get to because, uh, well, he can't drive. But I also figured, you know what, while we have uh, this thing out here, why don't we also go, go to the nearby shores biome. Uh, we can check out the grasslands. We can also get ourselves out to the highlands that are toward the west and north of the Kerbal Space Center. And if I'm feeling particularly ambitious, maybe I might even get myself over to those mountains. See how much science we can collect. Uh, and I thought, while I was doing all of that, why don't we pay another visit over to the uh, monolith that is a little bit to the north of the Kerbal Space Center. We ch I checked this out a whole lot of episodes ago, and it was just, and I was puzzled that it was really, really short, and, whoa, whoa, take a look at this. Oh, what's going on here? Well, maybe it's just me, but I think it might look a little bit taller. We're going to have to break. Come on, break, 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 stop. Gotta get out and take a look at this. Carol needs to do some investigating. Yeah, it was way back in episode 10 that I was last here, and I'll put, there's a link down there at the bottom that can take you to it if you wanna take a look, but this thing is definitely taller. In fact, I can just see the top of the squad logo now. So it's growing? Wow, that is actually pretty cool. And it must be connected to my progress through the game you know as I progress through the game now I wonder if it's connected to the upgrading of the buildings in the Kerbal Space Center or if it's connected to the tech tree I don't know but that's pretty cool so as I get further in the game it's going to get bigger and bigger we will definitely have to come back and check on this every once in a while but for now we got some other things to do we're going to drive over to the nearby grasslands where quite frankly there isn't a whole lot of science to collect because I'd already landed uh, the Otter 1 uh, an episode or two ago. Actually it was just last episode wasn't it? Yes, in the grasslands and got a surface sample there. I managed to also scrounge up a little little tundra as well. There's a sliver of tundra out here and I'm going to take advantage of it. Uh, again, the reason I'm really being a science scrounge right now is because I want to get my science up to 300 so that I can unlock electronics which will have a large dish antenna which can reach out to Duna, which is important because I do have a Duna launch window coming up that I do want to take advantage of. But with that done, all that's left now is for the long drive out to the Highlands. I'm just using Raster Prop Monitor here. Uh, it really isn't that helpful as far as telling me how far I am from the Highlands. I really am looking forward to analyzing that multi whoa <laughs> you do have to watch this thing it tends to be it tends to get away on you 
the brake quite off, especially when you're going downhill. The thing has a, it's a little less stable than my old science buggy because it's a little longer. It's still, I should just get rid of this whole tripod thing. I do have some better wheels. There's really no reason for it. And, uh, you know, you really got to watch yourself over the crest. You got to watch yourself on the downhills. You got to, whoa, oh, come back. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, I got her. She's okay. She's okay. Oh, she's okay. <laughs> Carol's okay. Well, that was scary. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Actually, if you look back, you will see that my, at my yaw control, you will see I'm trying to... I don't know what I'm trying to do here, to be honest. I just need to get her out of here. Um, if you look back at my yaw control right there, you'll see that I was steering the wrong way. I steered to the left when I should have steered to the right. I probably could have saved that, but I panicked. I choked. Well, what else is new? Well... What do you think, Carol? You're up for a jog? Here's our waypoint. Oh, no, that's the Kerbal Space Center out that way. And the Highlands are somewhere up that way, so... Well, let's go. I'm not quite sure how far it's going, how long it's going to take us to get there, but uh, Carol, you know, you know, she was 17 days in space and only four days back. She's up for a run, is she? <laughs> Well, it actually was more than just a little bit of a run. It was actually over six kilometers, which took more than 50 minutes for her to get out there. But got to the highlands, we did. We did our surface sample, and I wasn't going to run her back to the capsule. I just recovered her from here and called it a day. And despite that being a bit of an adventure, that little... uh. That little mission ended up netting me 60 science, which got me up to 283 science. I need 300 to unlock electronics. I am closing in on it. Uh, should be pretty soon now. In the meantime, I think it is time to get out to the Karayan and get our rescued Kerbals back down to the surface. And we're just going to cut straight to the Curse Dock, making its final approach to the Karayan. There's nobody in the Curse Dock. It's been floating in orbit here for several days. Uh, while these guys were making their way back. And now it's time to finish off uh, the rescue missions and transfer Chrissy and the Tamley. <laughs> Starting to forget these missions have been around for so long. Chrissy and Tamley need to come over here, and then we'll get them down to the surface, and that will finish off the rescue mission. I'm not going to bother. I, I'm not going to show you the, the whole rendezvous and stuff. That's You've seen that too many times. So we're just closing in here. We're getting in. Reasonably close, not super close. Uh, and you know, while they're doing, they're talking inside there, and 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 you know, Tamley's getting ready to kind of get out first, but then Glafia's going, you know what? Uh, why don't I go over there and uh, check it out for you? Okay, just make sure everything's okay. This thing's been in orbit for a while. We should make sure everything's okay before you guys head down. And of course, Tamley and Glafia, are, or Tamley and Chrissy, are very, very appreciative of Glafia's offer. Jeb though knows what's going on and. Gives her a nudge and says, well, you know, make sure you don't forget your wrench. Yes, thanks to Kerbal Inventory System, an engineer with a wrench is a dangerous thing. And in fact, this particular engineer, I think is particularly dangerous. I'm starting to worry about her. I think there's some, some kleptomania involved in her. She's looking at that green light. And she's going, ooh, a shiny I want. So I think I'm just going to take it. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, we'll just call her the appropriator. You don't need this. We're just going to be ditching this service module anyway. It's just going to burn up in the atmosphere. You don't need lights. What do you need lights for? I want the lights. <laughs> uh, let's just say don't ever park your car in Glafia's old neighborhood. Anyway, yeah, she says, oh, everything's checked out fine. Uh, you guys are free to head on over. So uh, first, uh, Tamley headed on over. And she's going, yeah, this seems awful dark. I thought it was brighter than this over here. And then, of course, she's followed very soon by Chrissy. And then it's time to just get these people back down. And it, it was a pretty standard descent. The only thing I have to be a little bit careful about is that, well, you know, there's a lot of vessels here. We have three different vessels here. We have the curse dock, we have the Karayan, and we have Chrissy's old debris still floating around. So, so I just sort of time warped to make sure that we were floating away from all of that before I just time warped from map view. Um, and by the way, I'm only going around about half an orbit before 
I'm going to do my descent burn. If you're doing a full orbit, you can't count on the fact that you're going to continue to float away from it. Thanks to the wonders of orbital mechanics, you will float away for a little while, then you'll start to come closer together again, and uh, you do have to be a little bit careful. You don't want to do these burns sort of blind. You do want to check out, make sure you're not going to crash into anything. But the whole descent went without any issues. Yeah, because trajectories continues to be a little unpredictable, I'm always going to estimate way long, just to make sure I land in the water. The water landings are always a little bit more predictable. Here we are, coming right over the Kerbal Space Center, and just a little while later, splash down. We're uh, going to take advantage of the fact that we have a scientist along. Uh, we can do surface samples now. I've not done a surface sample from the water, so we'll get uh, Chrissy to come out. And uh, do the whoa! Wow! <laughs> oh, ouch! Oh, she took one for science there. <laughs> uh, well, okay, surface sample. There we go. Ten point eight science. Awesome. And that combined with another 10 science transmitted from MapSat 2, which is still busy mapping the moon, gave me over 300 science which is enough for me to begin research on electronics, which will give me that antenna that I need for my DUNA mission. However, I do have to wait for precision engineering to finish being researched first, which is only two and a half hours away. It's going to unlock at the same time as precision propulsion here. here. So uh, yeah, that's great. And while that's happening, why don't we check in on what Glafia had in mind with those lights that she swiped. Actually, there are a couple of things about the lights on this vessel that I don't particularly like, so I'm going to do some adjusting. But before we get around to doing all that, what I want to do, I want to give myself a bit of a handhold where I'm going to be putting the lights. So I need to equip my wrench, and then I'm going to take this uh, ladder piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to install it up here at the front. And this is just to give Glafia something to hold on to so that we can do some fine adjustments with the lights. Now there is a docking port that is going to be coming up here soon and I want to install the docking port right at the end of this probe body at the front of the ship and I want to have it so that you know as a vessel's coming in they'll see the lights. So I'm going to move where the lights are and we're going to rotate them. It's looking about right and then it's H All right about there. There we go. H and attach. That's it. And then we'll do the same thing with the green light on the other side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the two lights that she swiped from the curse dock and we're going to put those around midships just to, I don't know, more lights. You can never have too many lights, right? And then finally, and I don't know if this is something you noticed, but it certainly is something I noticed shortly after having uh, flying around with the uh, Korion, is I have my stern lights backwards. I have the red light on the starboard side of the ship, and I have the green light on the port side of the ship. Oh, that, that quite simply is not accept acceptable, so we're going to switch those two lights around. Uh, yeah, that's, that's going to look a lot better I think. Yeah I gotta say I think Kerbal Inventory System is very quickly becoming my favorite mod. I just I love doing construction in space. It's just awesome that you're able to change things around, move parts around. I really can't wait until I've unlocked some of the bigger part or the uh, heavier tools to allow you to detach bigger parts. Apparently with uh, multiple Kerbals you can move big parts around. I mean, the potential for this is just going to be awesome. Back at the KSC, we have a special delivery for the Korion. I had no idea what to call this thing, so uh, I am calling this the UPS probe. And uh, basically, its job is just to deliver a uh, couple of parts that were not unlocked at the time I built the Korion, but are unlocked now. We're going to use Kerbal Inventory System to uh, attach those parts to the Korion. So this is a very, very simple probe. I built it as small and as cheap as I could. Um, before I did this launch, I moved the Korion up to 120 kilometer circular orbit. So this is going to be inserted into an 80 kilometer circular orbit, a little bit behind the Korion. That's gonna allow it to catch up to the Korion because it'll be moving more quickly. Standard rendezvous. 
nothing special about it. The two parts, though, that it is delivering are a docking port and a Kerbal attachment systems fuel pipes that you will you can use to connect two vessels together and transfer resources between them. Uh, so now that we are, I'm just going to close in the gap here a little bit with the probe, and then I'm going to use the RCS on the Corian to kind of park in right alongside it. Alrighty, that'll do. Then what I want to do is I'm just going to orient the probe so that the two vessels are more or less parallel to each other. So a little bit confused. There we go. Oh, the other way. That's looking pretty good. I don't know. I think this should make them a little easier to connect together. Oh, uh, I'm getting too picky. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and then Jeb's going to use a little RCS. We'll first go ahead and use, we'll use a Kerbal Engineer here to pick the probe as a target. It's great not having to go to map view. There it is, UPS probe. And now at least I have a distance indicator, so it's about 14 meters away. And I'm going to be doing this pretty much by eyeball, not by looking at the nav ball at all, because my velocity here is going to be too slow. So I'm just going to orient the craft here and just sort of slide in under it. That's kind of the plan. So on the RCS. And I have, yeah, if you hear those sounds, I don't know. I haven't decided. That's again from the Interstellar mod. I've upgraded Interstellar from the last episode. So they're not quite as harsh as they were from, uh, as you heard them last episode, but Still not sure if I like them or not, but I'm going to live with them for a little while, see if I get used to them. See if I decide if they're better than silence. I guess they're not so bad. So again, Jeb's just going to slide in under here. And then once we have this in a satisfactory and relatively stable position, we're going to send out Glyphia. And her job is going to use the pipes to attach these two together. You know, even if you don't plan on transferring any resources between vessels, at the very least, um, the pipes will hold the two vessels together, so you don't have to worry about them drifting apart, because Kofia is going to have some work to do. Okay, we just need to make our way over here. And after all my careful trying to align the probe, of course, once I left it, it started rotating on its own, so it's no longer parallel. Oh, well. Now, you used to be able to grab... These are KAS parts, and you used to be able to just right-click and grab them but it looks like not anymore. It looks like now I think we may need a tool for this. So we'll open up her inventory. We'll grab her trusty wrench. Again, right? No. Okay, G grab. Yeah, yeah. It works exactly the same as uh, other parts, even though this is a KAS part. And then what we'll do... Well, I think she just nudged it a little bit, too. Her make our way back up here and then what we need to do there's another pipe endpoint on the other side and we need to link to that and you simply do that by right clicking and saying link and now those two pipe endpoints are linked and then all we have to do is attach the other endpoint to the vessel so we'll just make our way down here and I'm really curious if I, maybe I didn't need the tool. I'm going to try and see if I can attach this without the wrench. So I have un, unequipped the wrench. I'll just see if I can put it on here. Let go. Nope, nope, it's just floating there. Okay, grab it again. Let go. H. Nope, needs a tool, needs a tool. Okay, equip Mr. Wrench as we're floating away. Ah, equip a tool. Click. Okay, good. Now link to it. Oh, shoot, our pipe's gone red. Our pipe has gone red because it's an unnatural angle for the two pipes to connect together, and that's because that stupid probe is rotating. We probably moved around while I was screwing around here. So we'll have to get Jeb to sort of fix the situation here. Let's get out here, take a look-see. Oh, yeah, we've drifted sideways quite a bit. Okay, Jeb, let's, let's move. Let's move back. Here we go. I don't know why, I always find maneuvering a ship while there's a Kerbal out on EVA a little spooky, but 
I don't think anything bad can happen. It's not like I'm going to run into her. That's looking pretty good. Let's just stop ourselves. All right. All right, Glyphia, let's get this done. Scoot on over there. Link the pipe. And it should be just right click and link. Hey, excellent. So now those two vessels are connected. They're actually considered now by Kerbal Space Program to be a single vessel by the game. Yeah, so uh, you can do everything you want with them, including, you know, including transfer resources around, but they are locked together. I do not have to worry about them anymore. But what I really want is this docking port. It is my docking port, so we're going to grab it. Oh, shoot, where's our inventory? Oh, dear. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Okay. Okay, I pushed escape. That's why you saw the uh, the uh, thing come up there just a little bit. I pushed escape to, um, to put the docking port back. It's always a good thing to remember there is pushing escape gets it. Okay. There we go. Okay, now we got ourselves a docking port. Then we got to get ourselves over to the front of the vessel and attach that on. But before I do that, these solar panels sure look nice. <laughs> Man, she just never stops, does she? But to be honest, it's probably not a bad idea to have some extra solar panels. I mean, the other, you know, what happens if something happens to those deployable solar panels? Having some static solar panels around would probably be a good thing. And, you know, I'm going to deorbit this probe once it's all done. We don't need it anymore. And with that accomplished, why don't we take a look at one more feature of the EVA Enhancements mod. And that uh, is that you can adjust, if you right click on the back of the Kerbal, you can adjust the power of the jetpack. So I'm adjusting it down to only 50% power. You can also set a default jetpack power uh, in the settings menu here. So I'm going to set the default back up to 100. And then I turn the jetpack down to 50. And again, that was just done by right clicking on the Kerbal. And now, the RCS thrusters are only half the power that they used to be, and you can see that it is reflected with the throttle indicator on the nav ball. So that's really cool because now, um, you know, for this type of fine maneuvering that she's going to need to do, this makes this all quite a bit easier. And I just finally discovered also the roll control that you just saw her use there. That is done with the Z and the C buttons lot of EVA control that I have here. All right, so just about to our handhold that I put here near where I want to attach the docking port. There we go. And she's drifting up a little bit. I don't like that, but let's get that docking port on there. So we'll drag that over and attach it. Okay, there we go. Oh, and I can see it's on an angle. I don't want it to be on an angle. I want it to sort of be aligned in the same way as the ship goes. Um, and she's still drifting. Okay, I'm going to reposition the ladder and all that kind of stuff and get myself into a better position for all of this. Okay, so we'll grab that again, and then we'll put it back on here. And connect. And I can see, see, still see it's rotated. You can see that line there. That line should be horizontal. So uh, let's try this one more time. Now we can rotate the part. So we're going to put it down here again. And then we're going to rotate the part. Just got to figure out which button. Oh, that's not the right one. Ro there we go. Rotate the part. Uh, oh, it seems to be going on either side of where I want it. You can hold shift and that gives you fine rotation just like in the vehicle assembly building. That's looking pretty good. It is a little bit awkward holding shift and doing those rotate keys, that looks all right. Now the real test, of course, is going to be to take a look at it from the inside here. So I'm gonna to go to the vessel itself, and what I'm looking at here is the nav ball. And of course, right now I'm controlling from the capsule, but if I right click here and go control from here and watch the nav ball, oh, it barely moved. I don't know if you noticed that here. I'll put it back, oop, that's the wrong capsule. Can't control from that capsule, this capsule. Go control from here, watch the nav ball, and it just barely changed. That's pretty good. 
I think I think I can absolutely live with that. That's going to be fine here. So we'll get back to Gofia and get her back inside. And then the final thing that we'll do is we will transfer a little bit of the fuel, all but about 10% of the fuel. I will take it out of the uh, the probe because it just needs enough fuel to um, to deorbit itself. I mean, it's not a lot of fuel. It's such a tiny little probe, but you know. Karayan can use all the fuel that it can get and waste not, want not. So uh, we'll do that, and then we'll uh, look at deorbiting this thing. Okay, so all we got to do is burn retrograde, and we are out of here. Okay, well, let's not burn that direction. Let's point ourselves a little bit away from Karayan so we don't have to worry about potentially hitting it. There we go. A little nudge away. All right, retrograde, full throttle. Say goodbye, the Karayan. Okay, so we just keep going like this until our peri Oh, wait, our apoapsis is going up. Oh, shoot, I was burning prograde. Okay, I was burning prograde, not retrograde. This direction's retrograde. Okay, let's start uh, burning that way. So we'll throttle. We'll you know what? No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> if I just. No, no, this is not a smart idea. Okay, well, I can neutralize some of my velocity here. Oh, I... No, no, this is dumb. I'm going to... I could potentially run right back into the Karayan again. So let's turn on the rendezvous data. Uh, shoot, come on. Back here. Ships. Karayan 1. Alrighty, now I got... Uh, now I can go into target mode here a little bit. And get a little bit better... Still, yeah. So we'll, there we go. That makes more sense. Now we can pull ourselves away, so we'll make sure not to crash into the Orion. That would be really bad. And now we can put ourselves onto that retrograde vector. There we go. And our periapsis is now into the negatives. And this thing's just going to burn up into the atmosphere. And as we see the Karayan go whizzing by at a comfortable distance, we can, oh, there's the UPS probe buzzing by almost a kilometer away. That's nice. And that's going to have to end this particular episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.